synth modulating between two outputs, you can have stereo panning, or you could send the individual outputs a different effect, or if you've got some more modular kit, different processing or filters. In other words, it doesn't have to be used for stereo, it can be just as good for adding interesting modulations. But just to demonstrate how it works, this tutorial set it up to pan hard left and hard right, but obviously you can do some more gentle panning to add some space without the madness. let's take a look at what I've done here. I'm using two outputs, obviously. I'm using the VCA and I'm using the VCF. And I'm modulating between them using the LFO triangle output. And because that triangle output is going to two destinations, it goes into the mult, then the mult goes to the VCA level, and it also goes to mix in the VCF using the VC mixer. Simple, <laughs> but let's go through it step by step. I've been using the VCA mode on, and that's because the signal from the VCF comes before it goes through the amplification circuit. So to get it equal on both ears. Let's take the noise out and just listen to the oscillator. Put that on. So I'm using a bit of PWM there. So to mix the level of that with the LFO, we take the LFO triangle and put it to the VCA CV in. And what we're doing there is we're bypassing the VCA circuitry, aren't we? But we also want to use the VCF for the second signal. So we'll take the LFO and put it into the multiple input. And we'll take the first multiple out and put that into the VCA CV in. So we're going to get the same effect. So now we want to take the VCF signal. We want to put that into mix. Well, we can use mix two or mix one, but we're going to use mix one. I'll explain why in a second. And we're going to take the second of the multiple outputs and put it into the VC mix in. So the triangle wave will now essentially twist this left and right, won't it? And to hear what's coming out of the VC mix, we need to put the output into the VC mix. And that's it, that's gonna run continuously now. So I've turned the cutoff down so you can't hear it. But if I start to turn it up, that's the output coming from the VCF. via the VC mix, and I turn this up and we're getting the VCA output. And obviously it needs to turn the cutoff up as well. And the eagle-eyed, if you might have realized, I had something in mix two as well. And that's because mix two is a constant five volt signal, so you can get a lot of clipping. So if we stick zero into mix two, when I turn this, it sort of changes the amount of signal coming out. So it keeps things much more under control. And if we'd have put the VCF output into the mix too, all we're doing is giving the same signal on each because the VCF output's now in time with the VCA. So you're still mixing between the VCF and the VCA signal there, but they're both happening at the same time. So we put the VCF into mix one and uh, nothing into mix two, this is just a, a dummy cable. But 
we don't have to stay sensible like that. We could move it to the LFO square. We can always take the LFO up into audio rate territory. And then if you've seen any of these before, we can use the keyboard CV to control the LFO rate. So you can get some really interesting little effects using that. And you'll notice I've got the resonance up a lot here, and that's because when you bring the resonance up, you reduce the overall level. Uh, and what you do get is clipping from this because you're not controlling the amplitude level. It's, it's going from minimum to maximum without any, <laughs> without any control. So this almost acts as a volume control for the VCF out. The volume control for the VCA is here. I don't know what that's going to sound like in the final mix, but in my headphones at the minute, that's really clipping badly. So I hope that was of some use to someone somewhere. I, I really like that, it's a really fun little trick. See you next time.